Logan Paul's videos are very different to the other creators we've looked at in this series. They're short, fast, funny, straight to the point and really easy to watch. Basically, it's four to five minutes of pure non-stop entertainment that leaves viewers always wanting more, ready for the next episode. His super high energy, super fast paced vlogs are something you can't take your eyes off and have gained him millions and millions of views on YouTube. And whilst his vlogs aren't as regular as they once were, there's still so much that we can learn from Logan and his editor, Hayden Hillier-Smith. Hayden also has a YouTube channel that is amazing for editors, so if you want to, go and check it out because his editing is honestly top notch. So we're going to break down three tricks that you can take from Logan's vlogs that can help your videos to gain more views, even if you don't have the audience Logan does, because let's be real, who really has 20 million subscribers? But before we get started, I'm Joe. I'm a YouTube and social media editor. And I like to think I've edited some decent videos in the past. Today is feeling like such a slog. It's super hot in the UK, about 30 degrees, and I've only just got over a blimmin' illness, but I'm slogging on with this video. So let's start breaking down one of Logan's videos. Vape? Nah, bro. <laughs> Laughing gas. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, the intro has already rolled. So short and quick, but why? I don't get why people have such long intros. Well, I do, because mine used to be really long and I really actually enjoyed making the long intro. It was really fun to make. I made it like this folding animation kind of thing and it looked sick. Really fun to create, really fun to edit, but when it's in every single episode you post on YouTube, the audience, no matter how good it is, is going to get bored of it. Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney Plus all know this because they have a skip intro button. It sounds basic, but viewers don't want to watch the same thing over and over again, and especially on YouTube where there are millions of other videos that they could click off and watch instantly. Even if it's the most beautifully well-edited intro in the world, people are still going to skip it because eventually they're going to get bored of it. Take for example the Walking Dead intro. I love that intro. It's so cool. The animation, low frame rate footage, how we rotate around the zombies and everything. I love it. But I still don't watch it when I watch Walking Dead. People now have an attention span of a goldfish. We have Instagram Reels, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, all super high paced quick content that you can just skip on really quickly. We don't want people to get into the habit of skipping our videos and if you have a long intro at the start they're going to get into a habit of skipping and if it gets a little bit boring throughout the rest of the video they might skip it again because that habit is already in their head. But you might be thinking what about branding? So Logan's intro still achieves the branding part and is super quick, super simple. We know it's Logan Paul vlogs, we know who's making the video and you might even subscribe so it is still really useful to have intros for that reason but editors don't worry you can still edit intros they are really fun to do but I think they work better in a one-off project where someone is seeing the intro for the first time or maybe you have a longer form of the intro and then you shorten it down for the rest of the episode and that way it doesn't repeat itself on every single episode after or if you adapt an intro for every episode for example with true news that true Doherty does he has quite a long intro but he changes it every single week depending on the news so it's still engaging because people are watching it to find out what the news is this week. Keeping things new and refreshing is really important and I'm going to be talking about that in the next couple of episodes so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. But we're getting sidetracked back to Logan Paul and Hayden's editing. Being ruthless with the cut. Now this is such an important skill as an editor that's often overlooked. I have no doubt that there must be hours and hours of footage filmed for these vlogs and they're only about five minutes. I would imagine there's about 30 minutes to an hour in every single location if not more. But the scenes are all really short and snappy. Just watch the start of this video. <laughs> this girl's laugh, she's screaming when I she laughs. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Oh, ew! You keep your Cheeto fingers away from me, miss. I don't even know you! What are your thoughts on Donald Trump? Do you listen to Joe Rogan? Oh, <laughs> she prefers impulsive. Oh, damn! I feel like I should run off this boat and tackle him while he's on the board. I already used your slushy machine. The least I can do is break one of your legs, too. <laughs> What's up, dude? Not a good day to be friends, except my friend would never ruin my slushy machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everyone hates parallel parking, but that's because I think y'all are doing it wrong.
There are four scenes in different locations over the space of a minute. This means that each scene is about 15 to 30 seconds and you need to be really ruthless because from that 30 minutes to an hour, you need to pick out 15 to 30 seconds that tells a story, engages the viewer and creates questions for them to want to watch on and have those questions answered later on in the video. It's all well and good saying, be ruthless with the cut, but how do we actually do that step by step? Let me show you. When you get all your footage, make sure you're taking time to watch through it all so you know what you have and you separate it in stuff that is unusable, usable, good, and then stuff that is exceptional. And then you can make sure that all of these exceptional moments are in the video and you can tell the story with everything else. If you make sure you've got these exceptional moments in the video, the video is gonna be so much more entertaining because you're, every time you're hitting the most exciting moments in the footage and the video is gonna be as exciting as it possibly can be. When you're doing this and you're selecting all the best bits of footage, make sure you're doing it through the eyes of your target audience not would I like this, would this entertain me? You're thinking, would this entertain the target audience of the video? If you like it, but it's not gonna benefit or inform or engage the target audience, get rid of it. You're editing a video for your target audience, not yourself. It's all well and good being able to pick out the best parts of the footage, but now we need to understand how to show them to the viewer and create emotion and engage the viewer as much as we can. How do we do this? Let's have a look at Logan and Hayden's editing and see how they do it. Oh! Holy shit, Mike. What's wrong with your leg? The momentum of these videos is absolutely ruthless. Go, go, go. You know, on to the next bit, on to the next funny moment. Comedy. There is no time to breathe, no time to take your eyes off these videos. How do they do this? In a scene, we normally have a bit of an introduction, a build, a high point, and then it tails off with a bit of a conclusion. In order to keep the momentum going in Logan Paul videos, we don't bother with a conclusion. We get to the high point, and then we cut away and go to the next scene, the next story. Always cut and move on in a high point. Don't give a viewer time to experience a lull in momentum. Think of it like a mountain. We climb and we climb to get to the top. No one wants to see the descent we move on once we get to the top and we carry on we then negate the lull that we would have had and take that momentum that we've gained from the high point onto the next scene you can see this technique used in almost every single scene in logan paul's videos especially because they're so sure and that momentum needs to be carried on we don't actually have time for a conclusion in these super short jam-packed high energy videos and we also know that logan and hayden are such great storytellers and even with these super high paced high momentum videos they still manage to tell stories even whilst constantly switching scenes a lot of the time the story continues through these scenes and even though we cut and change to a different location the storytelling continues just because we're cutting often and changing scenes doesn't mean that the story has to change take for example these two scenes we hired someone to get a piano accordion and then do something i bet it'd be great this is great <laughs> The dialogue and the story never actually changes, but we change locations. It's very clever. A great way to check if you're telling a concise and thought out story is to watch the video without any visuals and just listen to it like it's an audiobook. Then see if you can understand the story and see what's happening. And then if you can't, watch it with the visuals and see if the visuals fill in that story. If it doesn't, you need to add something else. Is it some visuals that show a viewer? Is it a voiceover that tells the viewer what's happening? But watching it without the visuals means that you're not distracted by the visuals and you're like, whoa, that's cool. You're literally checking it for story. Every person has a different way of doing it, but personally, this is what I found great results with and it's worked for me in the past. Logan also tells stories in different ways and sits down and talks to the camera if there aren't so many visuals to explain and show it just to fill in when we don't have that extra footage but the story still needs to be told he's also started doing this with his new nft collection originals and every nft he tells a story about and they've got a nice amount of visuals but he's also sat down talking to the camera telling the story as well so as an editor there's always different ways to tell stories 